Hello there and good afternoon. I'm Rose Jacobs reporting live from Kalkine's studio. It's lunchtime here in Sydney and time for the Mid-Market Pulse. In today's show, we'll take a look at the overall Australian share market performance by the mid-session trade. So, without any further ado, let's get on into it. Australian shares remained under stress by afternoon trade on Wednesday, weighed down by financials and mining stocks. All the big four banks were trading lower, led by the Commonwealth Bank of Australia after it raised concerns about margin pressure, while mining stocks were dragged by correction in commodity prices. Investors also reacted to latest wages data, which is closely watched by the Reserve Bank, to take call on the cash rate hike. As per the data released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, wages growth in the September quarter grew to 0.6% from 0.4% in the previous quarter. The annual growth rate rose to 2.2% in the year to September quarter, which was in line with the market expectations. Earlier this month, the RBA in its policy statement said that there were no signs of a rise in wages that dampen expectations of a sooner than expected lift in interest rates. The central bank had reiterated that subdued wages growth and underlying inflation meant it did not expect to be increasing the cash rate before 2024. By the afternoon trade, the ASX 200 index was down by 30.50 points or 0.41%. Earlier today, the benchmark index had a weaker than expected start, undermining firm cues from Wall Street, which finished high in overnight trade. On the sectoral front, nine of 11 sectors were trading higher, barring financial and materials. The information technology sector was the best performer with a 1.6% gain following positive cues from the US counterpart NASDAQ. Healthcare and consumer discretionary sectors also gained over 1% while utilities, telecom, energy and ARIAT traded higher with decent gains. Financial sector was the worst performer with a 1.7% loss amid rising inflationary pressures. All four big lenders, Westpac, Commonwealth Bank, ANZ Bank and NAB were trading in red. Material sector also extended loss for the second day owing to fall in iron ore and copper prices. The gold mining stocks also reeled under selling pressure as strong US dollar impacted demand for yellow metal. In our next segment, let's focus on the top gainers and losers by mid-session trade. The biggest loser on the ASX pack was crop protection and seed technologies company New Farm, which dropped 7.2% by afternoon trade. Some of the other notable losers were Commonwealth Bank, media and entertainment business Seek, and gold miners Chalice Mining and Evolution Mining. On the gaining side, telecom services provider Unity Group topped the gainers chart by rising 7.5%. Some of the other top performers were auto retailer Eagers Automotive, fintech firm EML Payments, mining business Nickel Mines and software business Appen. And now we'll take a very short break, but stay tuned on Calkine TV. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Hello and welcome back. Let's move on to stocks that created a buzz on the ASX today. Shares of Afterpay rose over 2% after the Australia's largest buy now pay later firm released updates on the annual general meeting which was held today. Speaking at the AGM, Afterpay chairman Ilana Rubin pitched to the shareholders ahead of the final vote on the Square acquisition in under three weeks, saying the combination will make Afterpay more influential on the global stage. He said that Afterpay and 
and Square are complementary, which created an opportunity to grow both organisations via strategic synergies and deepen the relationships between merchants and customers. Afterpay shareholders will vote on the deal at a special meeting on December 6. Square's shareholders unequivocally backed the deal in a vote on November the 4th. Shares of A2 Milk were down 0.7% by mid-session after premium dairy nutritional company released updates of the AGM. Speaking at the event, Chairman David Hearn told investors at the company's annual meeting there is no hiding that 2021 fiscal year was very challenging. While still particularly or partially rather awarding the executive leadership team partial bonus payments. Hearn said everyone was disappointed with the baby formula and fresh milk makers financial performance and the pressure this put on the share price. The Kiwi company had a forgettable performance in 2021 as it was impacted by four consecutive downgrades in May. It flagged a major write down in the inventory. The company is also facing at least one class action while another is being investigated. The share price of Seven West Media climbed nearly 0.8% after it raised its earnings guidance for 2022 financial year. The media company expects 2022 EBITDA to be 7-10%. to The company upgraded earnings estimates after it reported a strong ratings performance, saying it's well positioned to capture Metro TV market share of 40% in the first half of the 2022 financial year. The company also said TV advertising spend is continuing to recover. Shares of Commonwealth Bank plunged to 7.6% to mark its worst session since March 2020 after it released September quarter business update. CBA, one of the country's big four lenders, flagged concerns about fierce competition which was hurting its margins. The country's biggest lender reported that its cash profit jumped 22% in the September quarter as its business continued to recover from the pandemic. The bank's net interest margin was considerably lower in the quarter due to higher liquid asset balances, price competition in the home loans market and the ongoing impact of a low interest rate environment. The NIM is the gap between what the bank pays to borrow money and the interest rate it is lending at and is the main source of profits. Well, that's a wrap in the show. Keep watching Calkine TV for more trending market updates from around Australia and around the world. I'm Rose Jacobs. Thanks for joining us.